So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can loop API requests to be able to pull more information than what the API is limiting to. In this case, showing you how you can get more than 100 results in one page where you're only getting 100 results per API request. And this is all with using a for loop within R. So with that in mind, let's head over to my R Studio. In this example, I'm gonna be using the read.co.uk API which I've used in a previous video about how to pull information from APIs using R. And I've got all the information in the description below if you want to look at how the actual API works. But this is just showing you how to use your API and then be able to then loop it to get multiple requests back at once so you don't have to keep doing them one by one. The first thing you want to do is install packages HTTR and also JSON Lite because HTTR is used to actually pull the API information in as a web request and then be able to then convert the JSON file that comes back into table format. Install both of those packages. I've already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. And then you just need to install the libraries, HTTR, JSON Lite, and then just for linking on stuff, just put in dplyr as well. So the first thing you want to do is be able to work out what your keywords are going to be for when you're pulling through the API. In this case, I'm using analyst as a keyword with location name equals London. Distance from location is 55 miles and the employer ID I'm using 575264, which is actually Reed's own employer ID because they are a recruitment company and it's actually their jobs on the board. That's why it makes sense. And also it's actually more than 100, but less than 200. So this is why we can actually see how the results work. And then at the moment I've got my API hidden, but what you can do is just type in as your API key what your authentication is. Now with the read API, it uses an authentication of where you need to put your username in, which is your API key, which you can just request for free in the link below. And then it's asking what your password is, which is blank. And then the type is basic. And again, if you need to understand how APIs work within R, and how I've pulled the information in the video in the description below, but this is just focusing on the for loop, is now we're gonna store that authenticate under a variable called API underscore key. So we've got our call that we're gonna be doing, which is using the name URL, and then we're storing our API key in API underscore key. So if I just run both of those, we now have our API key stored and then also our URL. Now the main thing of when you're using a for loop and you want to be able to store data, the best thing to do, especially with an API, is being able to store them in a list. So all you want to do is just create a list by simply, so you can call this whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it responses. And then all you do is just point to it and then you just do list and then two brackets open and closed. And then all this will do is just create a list ready for our responses from the for loop to be able to be stored into. So if we just highlight that and run, we now have our list. And there's nothing in it at the moment because we haven't actually run any loops yet. So now we've got our list saved, our API key saved and our URL. We now need to add on to our URL. What do we need to look at? And in this case, we're going to be using a thing called results to skip. The reason is because within the URL call, it maxes out our 100. So we know we want to be able to actually skip to the next 100. We want to start one at 101 and so on and so forth. So we can keep bringing back 100 results as long as there are that many. With this one, this is only less than 200, but more than 100 actual results that come in. So I know it's 200, but you never know what you're going to be pulling back. And you might know all the information, you might not. But you don't want to sit there and create a list typing in 1, 101, 201, 301, so on and so forth. This is where you can actually just create a sequence. And how a sequence works is all you're asking is, can you start from 1 and then go up to 1001 by 100? That's all using SEQ within brackets from equals 1, that's our starting point, comma, 2 equals 1001, which is our endpoint, comma, by how many do we want to keep going up by equals 100. And if we just run this, you can see down here, we have 1, 101, 201, so on and so forth, all the way up to 1001, which is what we want. So you don't have to sit there and write it, you can just create it like that. Now you have that, you want to be able to drop this within a for loop. So how the for loop works and does the sequence is you want to write that part first and then type in after for what you want to call it. In this case, we're just going to call it I and then in there, the sequence that you want. 
and then you just do another bracket because then that closes. We then need to set or technically nest the information in our for loop that you want it to run, which will basically go all the way through this information, this information, this information, this information, one, and then it would do it again. And then it do it again for skip to 201 and then do it again, then 301, so on and so forth. So you want it to keep rolling through all the different bits of information. So what we want here is to then save a variable where we're just going to call this rec underscore URL. And then we're just putting in our URL that we know. We're using this within paste zero. Paste zero, all it is, is where you're going to be joining things together. And as these are going to be in a URL, you don't want any spaces. And that's where paste zero comes in handy because what it does, it just cleans it up. But then also allows you just to join everything. If you just did paste, it wouldn't do that. So that's why it's always used paste zero is always the safe bet. And then you just want to put in your URL and then a comma. And then this is where we're putting in our results to skip because then that will be at the end of our URL. And as an example, for keyword equals analyst, that was our call out for looking for anything that had analyst in it. In this case, we want to go and results to skip equals 1, 101, 102, so on and so forth. And that's why the I comes in afterwards. But because we've got that and that runs, we also have the issue of we need to be able to do the authentication with the API key. And this is the bit that was tricky to get to work. In a lot of examples out there, they're not using authentication or it's just simply just doing web scraping and you're just doing pagination. You're just going onto the next page, next page. This works perfectly for that as well. But when you've got the API key that you need to push through and the API key is doing a separate authentication and not just sticking at the end of your URL. This is where you need to put your URL request, which we've got here with the API key in a get. And then that will ensure that when the information comes in, it won't error. It will actually authorize it and actually push through that information. So now we're just taking that there, putting it in and then running the authentication as well. And then we're just calling that response. And then that will keep looping back when we're going through the for loop. And then the next part we need to do is then take that JSON content because so once we retrieve all that information, it gives us in JSON format. So then what we want to be able to do is then store that information as responses underscore JSON. And then we want to be able to actually store all these loops into our list that we just created. And you remember our list is called responses. So we just call it responses. And then within two square brackets, both side, we put in our variable for our for loop again, which is just called I. And all we're doing is sticking in there responses, but the responses underscore JSON, but not just that, we want to be able to take the results. So that's why I've then added the actual dollar sign. So then we look at within that table that it creates where it's got the responses, results in that column and then pulling through that information instead. So if I was to run this, I can show you exactly what this looks like now. So now we have that information stored. We now want to have a look at our list. And this is where it's pulled in the information and saved them. Now what the list has done is created, even though we wanted one and then skip a hundred, it still creates a name number for each one. So if I keep coming down here, if we'll finally get to 101 and then you'll see we got data there. So we have data. But if we go back up, we can see one has data and then two doesn't. So what we can do, we can view the data. So if we go to view responses equals one, as if you remember the name is one, so it's responses. And then in there, that's the one we're looking for. So that's why it's written in that particular format. If we just run that, we can see our data. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, we can see maxes out at 100, which we expect because each one will max out at 100. If we go to two, which is not the one we wanted, there won't be any data, so no data there. But if we skip to the next one, which is 101, we can just run that and then we can see our next set of data. And we know that that is then the next 100 results. But there isn't 100 results in the next 100 results. There's only 45. That means altogether there's 145. So you could print those results and just have them separately. But if you wanted to bring them all as just one table and then be able to export or just view the data all as one, you can simply just use from dplyr bind underscore rows 
and just create it, point it to a variable and then just put in responses. And then what that will do, it will take all the different bits of data that it's actually found, completely skip the ones that were blank that it didn't need in that list and then just append them all on top of each other to give you a result, which we can see if we run this now. Jobs has come up here with our 145 observations. And if we scroll down, we'll see this goes beyond 100 and then carries on all the way down to 145. And then if we look at here, we had, maybe that was probably not the best one. So let's have a look at that one. The application developer was row 98. So if we look at our first table, which is responses one, and then look at row 98 application developer and then if we go back to our jobs and then let's randomly pick here so let's go hr generalist is 108 so technically row 8 on responses should be hr generalist so there we go hr generalist on row 8 so as you can see all you have to do is just run this for loop and it will just pull back all the information and put it all into one table so you don't have to sit there and just keep grabbing 100 records each time just to get the information you need you can do it all in one go so i hope you found this video useful and if you did please give it a like and subscribe and if you want to carry on your analytical journey check out these videos over here and as always until next time